What up players, it's Warbot, stay up in his mug. Welcome to an unboxing of Archaon, the ever chosen, a now out of print model for Warhammer Fantasy. It's, I say it's out of print because I tried to get this on the Games Workshop website and it said it was temporarily out of stock even though it has the entry for him and and the pricing and everything on their products page it says it's out of stock and I hear rumors, rumblings through the warp that they're re-releasing this with the new Archaon End Times book new as of the filming of this video which is rumored to come out after the Skaven one in a couple of months so Archaon, our boy here, is getting upgraded. I hear he's going to be on a dragon and he's going to be ginormous and and amazing looking. But for today, I wanted to unbox the previous sculpt, which is this one here. So this version is in fine cast. They did, they, hmm, someone's at the door. They did port it over to fine cast before they uh, got rid of it all together. And so it's going to be in here. Yeah, that was weird. That was my neighbors. Uh, my neighbor's kids that came by and they were like, Can we have some eggs? I was like, uh, okay. I don't know, people still do that. Ask for eggs. And stuff. Alright, so we've got three sprues. And, uh, looks like let's... We've got some pieces that broke off here. This is probably the horse's tail. And let's zoom in. There we go. So good sculpting on the tail, or, or actually, I don't know about the sculpting, but good conversion into this fine cast material. I don't see any really terrible mold lines or, or air bubbles. It's for the hand, here's the hand that looks like it's holding the reins. I wonder why, I thought, I thought he's holding a shield. Or maybe the shield is goes into the the bracer. Archaon is known to be on this very decorative base so that's what that looks like. It's got a little two little um, nubs there plus an arrow to show where the front is so I guess when you're building it up what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill two holes and then pop those in so that it looks like that. You got your upper body here. Oh, look at all this flash. Fine cast known for this, all these little flash parts. But no really obvious air bubbles. I don't think these are air bubbles. I think these are actually parts of the sculpt because air bubbles are more circular. They're very round, spherical in shape, and those are not. So, plus I don't see any air bubbles. Oh, there. There's a perfect example. There's an air bubble right there that I'm gonna need to fill in. With um, with some green stuff or some modeling putty, right there. Uh, but that's no problem. It's in a normally out of the way place, anyways. Take a look at the back here. Pretty cool. I mean, it's kind of a shame that they're going to be getting rid of this sculpt completely. Games Workshop. Every time they like to do something new, they they bring in a new sculpt for a model or something. They get rid of the old ones completely. They stop selling them. And uh, that's too bad, because this is a pretty cool looking model. You got some flash here from the talons of the cloak. Some flash over there. So flash is basically just extra resin that's not part of the sculpt that ended up when they were pulling the the model out of the mold. Or uh, or when they were making the model, rather, the, the resin was, it, it fell into these out of the way places that when they pulled it out, it stayed in there. So it's very easy to shave off with a razor, hobby knife. Get your horse's body here. And there's a whole history, Archeon, there's a whole history when they made this guy for the Storm of Chaos campaign in the early 2000s. They had a whole story of who this guy was. He's a fallen uh, Templar, I believe, of the Empire. And he went into the library and uh, he was he was looking for the best way to fight chaos and then he came out all crazy because he learned that uh, chaos is like eternal and everlasting and you can't fight it so you might as well join it and and then he became this big bad guy. I like the musculature on the horse. It's a really great sculpt in the in the neck. Some ugly flash here that I'm gonna have to be very careful careful about scraping off. 
but I like the I like the horse. It's a good sculpt, considering the time that it was made. Here's the other side of the horse's body. So it's rearing up, and Archeon's got his sword held out. Very, very cool. And then there's this awesome chaos shield. There you go. So that's what he looks like. I'm going to go build him up, and we'll come back and take a look at him all built up. And here's the finished look of our Archeon, the Ever Chosen model, in fine cast, all built up and ready for priming. Now, I did want to mention that the horse that I got, and I, I'm not sure if this is also true with metal models, but in the fine cast, it's kind of a problem. There's a very noticeable line down down the middle, and the, uh, the horse head too, as well, which I'm gonna need to go in with some liquid green stuff and just kind of smooth over. The left arm is very difficult to position because there's no natural groove for the reins to go into the back of the horse's head. If you see there, there's no groove for the back part of the reins to go in, and the front part, there's no slot for it to go in. You just kind of glue it to the bottom of the horse's mouth. So the tricky thing with this is, in metal, I guess it's it's okay because the reins, the front of the parts of the reins that connect to the model are going to be that that diameter, that thickness in, in metal, so it's it, it wouldn't probably have as much play but with fine cast there's a tendency of the resin to warp or get bent sometimes in travel and sometimes like you've seen me end up with like with my incubi with very bendy blades and weird oh especially my, if you remember my um the the headsman from the ogres that that guy has really a, a bendy staff so the the reins themselves were at a weird position i had to kind of bend and hold them in place. You couldn't pin them because they're too thin. And so the arm itself, what I had to do was pin the arm, the hand, to the shoulder or the upper arm. Luckily, I think that's why the shield is meant to cover this area because it's a very weird join. So I suspect that in the metal model, it's a weird area to join as well. The base has been glued just like I said it would and uh, the right arm, I pinned it but actually what's gonna happen is I am going to do a conversion for a client. This model is for a client of mine who wanted an ax instead of Archeon's sword. So uh, I just wanted to show what it would look like built up the way it's supposed to, the sword pointing forward, the head kind of tilted at a little bit of an angle. It doesn't have to be. I could have placed the head looking to the, the left, but with the arm pointing straight forward, I figured the, hand, the head would follow the hand motion. Um, other than that, I also pinned the hooves to the base. Pinning is a great technique that I'll talk about in in the next podcast episode, but um, it's, it's way better than just using super glue because the surface areas are so small, the contact points are so small, just the bottoms of the hooves to the base. If I were to drop this model, especially if it were metal, the weight of the model being all the way at the top would almost surely snap it off. So uh, by pinning though, or magnetizing, you're able to really get a good join for where the pieces are supposed to go. Okay, so overall uh, there was a bad mold line across the top of the helmet that I had to shave off and there were, like I mentioned, some, some weird mold lines and mold shifts here that I'm going to need to go back over with some uh, liquid green stuff. But considering that the model was made in the late 90s and that was a time when they were trying to uh, change the aesthetic of the Chaos Warriors of Chaos faction from being very big or, or very uh, short and squat to being more bulked out like you see with the Chaos, uh, the new Warriors of Chaos models, the newer ones. I think it's a great sculpt. It's got lots of height and it's very dynamic looking. It's got lots of cool things going on like the cape and uh, the pointed sword and the horse kind of rearing back and shying away. Plus decorative bases which you didn't see too much of in the earlier models. So um, I, I think this is a great model. I hope that the new one that you come up with is gonna be just as awesome. It's gonna be a big, giant, monster-looking thing, undoubtedly, so we'll uh, see. Hopefully it won't be um, you know, just completely cartoony and ridiculous looking because I feel like this model still has some of that, that, um, that serious, gritty, dark kind of um, realism to it. You see that kind of stuff in like 
the Typhus model. It's it's not cartoony. It's very let me show for comparison. Very dark and and grim and gross and and serious. And um, and then you get stuff like this. Wah, wah, wah.